Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Now, believe it or not, we are this close to Christmas, right? Christmas Eve, Thursday, Christmas Day, Friday. There's actually a major feast day today, December 21st, and that is the Feast of St. Thomas. I've often thought that St. Churches named after St. Thomas and dedicated to St. Thomas, as well as those churches dedicated to St. Stephen, St. John, and the Holy Innocents, kind of get the short shrift on being able to have big parish festivals for, the, for their patron saints because they're so darn close to Christmas. We're so busy getting ready for all the Christmas excitement that Thomas, John, Stephen, uh, Holy Innocents, whose feast days are the 21st, the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th, kind of gets short. We, don't, we really can't do anything else but focus on Christmas at this point, right? Uh, but St. Thomas's feast day is today, December 21st. Uh, and now, most of us, when we think of St. Thomas, unfortunately, we think of the nomenclature that is given to him, the nickname, which unfortunately is Doubting Thomas. Right? Uh, and this, of course, comes from the scene that happens in St. John's Gospel, where uh, after the resurrection, Jesus appears to the disciples, the apostles, uh, to all those people who are in the upper room, who are kind of cowering for fear. They've heard this account from Mary Magdalene and then from Peter and John that, that the Jesus' body is not there in the tomb and that Mary Magdalene has this remarkable thing that she's seen the Lord. Uh, and so they're all kind of pretty dazzled at what this could possibly mean. And then Jesus appears to them. Uh, the problem is, is that Thomas isn't there. I, I, who knows where he was, uh, but he was not present when, Tom, when Jesus first appears in the upper room. Uh, and so we hear in the 21st chapter, uh, sorry, the 20th chapter beginning at verse 24, but Thomas, one of the 12 named Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see the hands at my hand, the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus and the doors being shut. He stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, right? He turns to Thomas and says, Seth to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hand and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Now, would that Thomas were remembered not for being doubting, right? Everybody knows the title Doubting Thomas, but for the fact that even though Thomas set up the parameter where he said, I can't believe unless I do these particular things, Notice in the lesson, Jesus turns to Thomas and says, here's my hands, here's my sides, go ahead and touch them. Nowhere in there does it say that Thomas actually touches them. I know there's famous paintings where, where Thomas's hand is in our Lord's side and all that kind of stuff, but there's nothing in the scriptures that says that Thomas even did that. What is in the scriptures is that Thomas says, unless I do those things, unless I touch the wounds, I won't believe. Jesus offers that to him, and Thomas is so taken aback just by the presence of Jesus and being addressed by Jesus that the scriptures don't record him actually reaching out and touching him. What is Thomas's initial reaction? He worships. My Lord and my God. Thomas, poor old doubting Thomas, is actually exclaiming right doctrine and truth, my Lord and my God. Anybody who tells you that Jesus never claimed to be God has apparently not read this part of the scriptures because Jesus takes his praise and worship because it's true. Jesus is Lord and God, right? And then Jesus goes on to say, you know, blessed are those who have not seen and yet will believe. Right? Thomas, even though he set up the parameter that he had to touch, just seeing Jesus was enough for Thomas. Well, Jesus says, blessed are those who don't see and will believe, right? Not many of us have seen Jesus face to face yet, but we believe because he's Lord. And, and you know, one of the things you may have noticed, perhaps you've got somebody sitting near you on, in church during the Holy Communion service, that one of the pious traditions of the church is that when the priest holds up the blessed sacrament, right, after he consecrates it, holds it over his head for a moment for you to adore. 
is to say quietly under your breath, like St. Thomas, looking at Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and saying, my Lord and my God. How wonderful is that? So we're coming up real quickly on Christmas. And how great is that, right? Thomas believed, uh, and, and we believe too. Uh, so please do go and sign up for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day service. Now, the 3 o'clock service on Christmas Eve, we're going to sing carols, and we're going to receive communion from the pre-sanctified uh, sacrament. In other words, the sacrament that's already been uh, consecrated, so we don't do the whole Eucharistic prayer. We're doing this outside, 3 o'clock outside, no matter what the weather is. It's going to be pretty cold, I assume, so please come bundled up. Uh, we're going to sing some Christmas carols. We're going to say a couple of prayers and we're going to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, and we don't have to worry about being limited to just a few people because we're outside. We'll spread out. Please wear your masks just for uh, caution's sake. And we'll social distance. Even though we're outside, it's a good idea. Uh, and we'll do all that and have a nice crowd of people to worship together and to receive communion Christmas Eve, 3 o'clock. If you'd like to, how, however, attend a communion service, uh, then we are limited to nine people inside the building. And we have those at 4 o'clock, uh, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, the 9 o'clock is already full, uh, and then 10.30 p.m., uh, and that's uh, nine people plus the priest, and that we will sing a Christmas carol at the beginning and a Christmas carol at the end and have the regular uh, Holy Communion services like we've been doing on Sundays during this restriction time. Uh, and then on Christmas Day, uh, we will have an 11 a.m. and a 12 a.m. service, or 12 noon service uh, as well. But you do need to sign up for those particular services uh, that are limited to nine people plus the priest. And the sign up is uh, at our website. There's a clickable link to the sign up genius, uh, stjohnsdetroit.org. Please do sign up. Please join us for worship for the celebration of the nativity of Jesus Christ. I hope you have a fantastic Monday. May God bless you.